بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده سبحانه وتعالى ونستعين به ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهد الله فلا مضل له وما يدل الفلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم فإن خير الحديث من كتاب الله وخير هدي هدي محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بضعة وكل بضعة دلار وكل دلارة في النار أما بعض السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته يقول سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن العظيم والذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات لنكفرن عنهم سيئاتهم ونجزيهم أحسن الذي كانوا يعملون In the name of Allah the beneficent the most merciful we bear witness that nothing should be worshipped except Allah and we forever bear witness that Prophet Muhammad ibn Abdullah is the messenger of Allah he is the seal of our prophets we bear witness that whom Allah guides, nothing can misguide them. And we bear witness that whom Allah guides, that nothing and no one can lead them astray. And those who choose to go astray, nothing can guide them to the path of truth, as we have come to know the path of Islam. I have probably 17 ayats that I want to read, but I can't. But I'll try for the duration of my time here to go through these ayats, maybe throughout the day, throughout the evening. But what I want to talk to you about is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us in the Quran a demonstration of his love. You should know that as a Muslim, we are people of prophecy. We are the followers of Muhammad the believers in Moses, the witnesses to Jesus, we are the spiritual sons and daughters of Abraham, and we are all the children of Adam and Eve. You should know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's love is real. And this is a sign of his love that I just want to share with you for the brief moments that we have. And what shall be the reward of our deeds? We're in this last 10 nights of the month of Ramadan and many have increased their worship, the recitation of the Quran, their giving of charity, the cleansing of their soul, the purification of their mind, the extending of their hands of grace and compassion. But this is all because of his love. What shall be the reward of our deeds? He says, those who believe and do the works of righteousness, we will transform their evil deeds into good and we shall give them the reward for the best of what they have done. Subhanallah. He will transform evil into good and give you the blessing of the best of what you have done. Now, I want to talk about love and sacrifice. Love is like a seed. The word hub and hab. Hub in Arabic is translated as love and hab is often translated as a seed. Also, they use the word habba for one and hubub as a pill. But love is like a seed. And for love to be successful, it must be cultivated and nurtured. If you are blessed with a seed and you desire that seed to produce its sweetest and greatest of fruits, there's some fundamental requirements you must fulfill for that seed to give you the best of what's in it. One of the things, the seed must be a life force. 
it must be a seed that in it is life. One of the things that's required for a seed to grow is it has to be planted in fertile soil. If you have a seed, you have to find good soil. If you have a good seed and good soil, you need water. Not water that is unbalanced, but water that is given in balance because even if a seed needs water, if you give it too much water, you kill it. If you bury it too deep in the earth, it won't grow. But also that seed needs light for warmth. Some plants die because of the massive cold. Sometimes people lose their whole crops. Why? It's too cold. But a seed that is planted in good soil, a seed that is properly nurtured with the proper water and given the proper sunlight can produce the unbelievable by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if that is so in the physical, what is required in the spiritual for love to grow? What is required? The Quran talks about love all throughout the Quran. قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِي Say, if you love Allah, then follow me. Meaning, Muhammad Wasallam. If you love Allah, then love is not a word, it is a deed. Allah's love for us is manifested every day in all of the provisions that we receive. It's a sign of love. So now, how is spiritual love fed? It's fed with sacrifice, nothing else. When you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you must be willing to sacrifice. What? Everything. Love demands everything. It will not accept partial commitment. It requires all of you. And the driving force behind all human behavior is that which they love that they see value in it. Let me give you an example. When you love dunya and your heart is filled with dunya, you spend your time chasing dunya. But dunya has no love for you. And all of the possessions that you gain in this dunya, when you die, they will remain and you will go on. And someone else will foolishly fall in love with the things of dunya, but dunya will have no love for you. But when you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you want to cultivate that love, then that love is cultivated through obedience and sacrifice. Let me give an example. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loved Ibrahim. And he loved him so much that Ibrahim prayed for a son and that son was given to him in old age. But once he was given the gift of life and his prayer was answered, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Ibrahim to do what? Sacrifice him. Huh? You love him? You love him. He is of my creation. You love him. But do you love him more than you love me? If not, sacrifice him. Bring him to the altar. And in my name, take the life that I have given. Love. Love. If you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you give everything. When Ali radiallahu an, who loved Rasulullah as a young man, Ali was so in love with the Prophet that he loved the Prophet, his mission and his message, and loved his nobility that when the Meccans decided they wanted to kill the Prophet, they ordered all of their youth to take their swords. And upon the prophet's exit, they will all strike him to shed his blood, causing his death. But Ali radiallahu an, a young man, he loved Rasulullah sallallahu so much that he was willing to sleep in his bed as a decoy. That even though he was a young man that had not lived out his fullness of life into old age, his love for the prophet caused him to lay down his life if necessary. Why? He loved the prophet, loved his message, and greater, he loved Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So even though he was young, to save the prophet, to protect the prophet, to honor the prophet, he would sleep in his bed. Knowing that death 
could be a reality. Love. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu an. He loved Rasulullah so much that when the Prophet asked of him something, he gave everything. I want you to think about that. What made the Muslims successful in the days of all? It's real simple. They had love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and love for his messenger and love for this mission that nothing in this dunya could distract them from the remembrance of Allah. Nothing. There's a verse in the Quran that there are men and women who are faithful that the things of this life do not blind them from their sacred duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing blinds them. Why? Because they're clear. They are focused. That the purpose for which they were created was for the glory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does the Quran say? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Qul inno salati wa nusaki wa mahyaya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alameen. La sharika lahu wa bithalika umirtu wa ana awal al-Muslimin. Say my life my prayers, my sacrifice, my living and my dying, all of it is for Allah, the Lord of the worlds, and I have been commanded to surrender to his will. Love is a force that has caused some people to die so that others could live. You know, there are people who love their flag more than they love God. You can say anything against God, they won't get angry. But if you touch their flag, they lose their mind. Subhanallah. Why? Because they've been indoctrinated to love a flag that may not represent the best of humanity, but they don't have love for humanity. As a Muslim, you have to know the value of self-love. I want to share with you a verse from the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us insight into the nobility of the human being. And that nobility is not based upon any external accomplishment, not based upon culture, ethnicity, political affiliation, wealth or status. It is simply based on the dignity that is bestowed upon every human being by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does he say? So what is the source of nobility? It is not race, it is not gender. He says, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَ بَنِي آدَمْ وَحَمَلْنَاهُمْ فِي الْبِرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ وَرَزَقْنَاهُمْ مِنَ الطَّيِّبَاتِ وَفَدَّلْنَاهُمْ عَلَى كَثِيرًا مِمَّنْ خَلَقْنَا تَفْدِيلًا He says, verily indeed, we have bestowed the majestic honor of nobility upon the sons and daughters of Adam. We have carried them across land and sea. We have given them of the best of provisions and we have honored them and elevated them over many creatures of creation. That's who you are. He has seen fit that in the creation of the human being who is destined for imperfections, even with all of human beings imperfections, he said to the angels, Bow down to Adam. وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ أُسْجُدْ adam. We said to the angels, bow down to Adam. Who was Adam that Allah would ask the angels and command them to bow down? He was the first human being that Allah bestowed upon him the nobility and the dignity of what it meant to be a human being that reflected the will of Allah in the human existence. The crown of all creation is that of man and woman. Everything in this universe is made to serve you, but you were created exclusively for the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not for the worship of dunya, not for the pursuit of the wealth of this life, but for the pursuit of becoming an instrument of the will of God in the midst of wickedness that you could show that Allah is forever victorious in the midst of darkness. You were born for greatness. And there's a man in the history of America that is the embodiment of faith and courage 
of a Muslim that you need to teach your children about. A man who knew the beauty of love, of God, of self, of his people, and the love of the principles of justice as displayed and embodied in the Quran and the life example of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A man who was willing to give his life, line up and be shot, who challenged the powers that be, who lost everything to gain everything, and that is your brother and mine, Muhammad Ali. Consider his faith for a moment. Muhammad Ali had very little knowledge of what we call Quran and Sunnah, but Ali had a heart that was pure. His convictions were real. His belief was true. Ali said, I don't go to war. I won't go kill no Viet Cong. Who was Ali talking to? He was talking to the government of America. That's who he was talking to. Ali said, I will not go and kill innocent men, women, and children in a foreign land. I will not go, and I'm willing to give my life because I am a Muslim in America, and I'm a conscientious objector to your ways that do not reflect the way of God. He said, I won't go to your war. We'll take your medals, Ali. Take them. You can't fight no more. I won't be able to fight. You won't make money. I'll survive. Why? Because Ali believed. He changed his name. He didn't say his name was Mo. He said, my name is Muhammad Ali. And those who refused to say his name in the ring, he beat him into submission. What's my name? He said to Sonny Liston. Say my name. Why? Because a name is powerful. Names mean a lot to people. That's why people always try to change your name. Because your name says something. When you say, what's my name? My name is Muhammad. Well, why not Mike? Because I'm not you. I'm me. Well, why don't you do what I do? Because your way is not my way, but that requires faith and conviction. What made Prophet Muhammad stand up to Quraysh? He believed. Did he know his future? No, because the future is with Allah. But he knew one thing. Allah says in the Quran, in the English translation, if you help Allah, Allah will help you and he will give you firmness in the land. He will make you a success. Why? Because that's his way with the believer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not unaware of the conditions that we're in. But let me assure you one thing, brothers and sisters. You have never faced the trials or the tribulations of a man like Muhammad Ali. You have never faced the government where you're going to jail for 10 years because you refuse to go to war. You have never faced losing your license where you can't even do that which was responsible on the surface for your livelihood. You can't even go and travel anymore because you lose your passport. And why did that happen to Muhammad Ali? All because of one reason. Ali accepted what he believed to be the teachings of Islam. Now look what happened to show you the honor that Allah gives the believer. I went to Muhammad Ali's funeral. Wallahi, I've never seen this in my life. The funeral is at 1 o'clock. We online at 7 a.m. in the morning. Can you imagine that? Most Janazas people come right just before and leave. This man had the whole world shook up waiting to say their farewells to one of America's greatest human beings who his source of inspiration was his faith in Allah and the acceptance of Islam. I watched the old, the young, the white, the black, presidents, heads of states, government representatives, people from Hollywood. I watched all of them through the airport that in spite of all the negative press, the media tries to give Islam, notice what I said, the media, because it's not the American people, it's a small group of bloodsuckers who are committed to deception, who Allah says in the Quran, wa makru wa makru Allah, khayru makirin, that evil men plot and they plan, but Allah is the best of planners. Can you imagine a man that once was hated? The whole country was honoring him. Why? Why did they honor that man? Muhammad Ali who carries the name of our prophet 
and a beloved companion who became a Khalifa. Why did they honor him? Because Muhammad Ali did what you and I are supposed to do. Stand on your convictions, even if it means death. Don't you ever compromise the beauty of your faith and lose your way in the way of your children. There is nothing in this dunya that is more sacred than your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't ever give up who you are. Don't ever compromise what you represent. There'll be many people that will live their lifestyle and may they live their way. But don't let others make you one of them because if you should lose yourself, then you will lose your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why do I say that? What does Allah say in the Quran? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ya ayyuha nas inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa untha wa ja'annakum sha'uban wa qaba'ila li ta'arafu inna akramakum inda Allahi atqaakum O people, we have made you into nations and into tribes which means there's no melting pot you are to be you 100% you in love with the way Allah has made you if you are light, if you are dark, if you are male, if you are female never seek to alter the nature in which God has made you be yourself and in being you you become the best reflection of God's intention for your existence on this planet but you gotta be you and you have to be proud to be who you are I made you into nations and into tribes that you may know yourself and that you get to know one another and know that the best of you is not black, white, rich, poor, male, female, but the greatest of you is that person in the eyes of Allah who is most righteous. Now let's go back. Love. How much love do we have for Islam? How much love do we have for Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? How much love do we have for our children? How much love do we have for the Muslim women in America who endure the abuse, the harassment, and the scorn of wicked people in the press. How much honor do we give them and see them as the flagship of Islam and give them the respect and the nobility knowing that every great man, whether he be a king, a prince, lawyer, or prophet, judge, or prosecutor, that no man or woman is born into this universe unless Allah give you a mother to hold you for eight to nine months and give you birth. And even in your birth, you are born in weakness and dependency, but a mother's love will nurture you into full strength think about that a mother's love will make her forsake sleep a mother's love will make her risk her life to bring you and me into existence a mother's love will make her run in the middle of an ocean and try to find a drowning baby a mother's love will cause her to run into a burning fire that a father says honey there's nothing we can do and she says with faith in Allah I'm going to get my baby and shock you sometime not only does she come out alive but the baby is in her arms why because there's something about faith that language cannot express how much love do you have for Islam how much how much love you have for your job you want to know how much love you have you'll know your love in two ways in life one how much time you spend fathers you love your sons how long do you talk to them when you come home from work what do you say listen Abdullah I'm tired okay just go play no 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 go play put the TV on go outside well I don't want to watch TV what do you want? I want to talk to you. I told you I'm tired. Go. Really, brother? You love your son? Go. But at the job, you were talking to everybody. You say, I love my husband. He says, let's talk. Oh, I'm busy right now. I've got to talk to my girlfriends on the phone. But honey, I need to talk to you. I'm going through something. I like Muhammad. I'm coming to my Khadija because I'm in the midst of doubt and confusion. My spirit is weakened. My dreams have been shattered and my faith is weak. So I turn to you like the prophet turned to his wife. He says, no, 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 I'm busy. I'm on the phone. Who are you talking to? My friends. Children, who do you love? Well, I love my friends, but do you love your mother? Do you love that woman that nurtured you into your teenage years? That when she simply says, give me a glass of water, do you say yes, mother? with love and affection at your service I hear and obey that it is my duty as a child to serve you in the way that you have served me or as a young person you go you think you're back in the old country get your own water really what have you become 
What have you become? Say, I love my friends. Where are they? On Facebook. Do you know them? No. You don't even know what they look like. You don't even know if they're real. Some people, they have lost so much love for the human being, they fall in love with dogs now. They give dog family names. This is my dog, Johnny. He's the second part of my family. We love Johnny. And they love dogs so much, they spend $1.6 billion on dog food, but they won't spend no money to free a starving child in the gates of Afghanistan, or in the gates of Africa, the gates of Asia, or even in the gates of North America. But they love a dog, and their neighbor is hungry and in the cold. Veterans who love America go to war to give their lives for this country and its political goals and ambitions. But when they return home, I have seen them with my own eyes. They eat out of the garbage cans and live on the subway of the gates of North America. Why? Because they were deceived. They were not loved. They were not honored. They were just instruments of deception. Who do you love? Where do you spend your time? With YouTube? Google? Movies, magazines, newspapers. How much time you spend with your deen? How much time you spend with Allah one-on-one? Just speaking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How much time do you set aside every day to say, Allah, I need the faith of Abraham. And what is that? وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ رَبِّي أَرْنِي كَيْفَ تُحْيَ الْمَوْتَ Oh, my Lord, Ibrahim said, show me how you give life to the dead. Allah said to Ibrahim, Afala Tubman, is it that you do not believe? Bella, I am firmly in my belief, but that my heart may find tranquility. How many times have you tried to test the love of God for you? How many times have you said, you know what? I'm going to walk by faith. I don't understand what's going on, but I know that the masjid needs to build. The masjid needs to expand. We need to buy land. No matter what they do against us, we must always be for us. As they work to destroy, we work to build. As they cast doubt, we bring hope. As they seek to make us feel captivated by the foolishness, we feel inspired by the promise of the unknown because there is no greater reward you could ever receive in this life than the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah loves you, no one can do anything to you. And if they do something to you, it's by his will, by his permission for a purpose that is greater than what you can imagine. So now, how much love do you have for Islam? The media bangs us. They spend billions of dollars to desecrate the image of Muslims. Why? You haven't done anything to them. Why would they seek to destroy your image? Why would people threaten your safety and your security when you're one of the best citizens or international guests that America has ever seen? You don't even know your value. They do. They know your value so well. What frightens them is not weapons because they got the best weapons. What frightens them is that one day you will wake up and realize that your true friend is Allah his messenger and the believers, and that you will not give yourself over to the ways of dunya, but you will aspire to be those that embody the principles of deen. Now, what does that mean in my conclusion? It doesn't mean you don't have the best of dunya. No. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa aqina adhab al-nar. The prayer of the Muslim. Oh my Lord, give me the best of this life and give me the best of the hereafter and save me from the fires of hell. We want the best of this dunya, but as the masters of this material world, you are to be the master of money. You are not to be the slave of money. Money was do what you tell money to do. Don't you ever let money become your master. Never. You tell that money what to do. When you have money, you say, listen. Now listen to me, money. You will be spent in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will be spent in America for the future of unborn generations that we will build mosques and schools and businesses and hospitals and banks and farmland and that one day if we are blessed we will have a city of our own in the midst of America's cities that represents the best of the collective effort of Muslims there was a time there was no Medina it was called Yathrib but there's a Medina now there was a time there was no America, but there's an America now. There was a time there was no place called the state of Israel, but there's a place called Israel now. Why? In my conclusion, there's a beautiful verse in the Quran, and I leave you with this. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I believe the verse says, 
إِنَّمَا أَمْرَهُ إِذَا أَرَادَ شَيْئًا أَنْ يَكُولُ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَكُونَ That verily when Allah wants something, He says be and it is. You know the key word there? Wants. You have to know what you want. What do you want in America? You want to live, die, go to the movies, go to work, buy things in the shopping mall, and go to the graveyard. That's not your destiny in life as a human being. You're bigger than the job. You're bigger than the car. You're bigger than the house. You're bigger than the TV. You're bigger than the technology. You are the men and women of God, and you got to start thinking and acting like that and make this world what it should be for you, your servant. Why? Because you are the servant of the king of all kings, and he is the master of your destiny. You must be believe in your dignity and your nobility as a Muslim. Anything other than that will cause our children to feel defeated and weak and they will not aspire to be Muslims because they have accepted shame as a price for trying to be righteous. Brothers and sisters, we don't have a lot of time left. But I will tell you this, in the last couple of nights of this great month of Ramadan, know that you have been blessed. Know that at three o'clock in the morning, no place in America, no place in America are people gathering from across the globe. Black, white, Arab, non-Arab, Asian, and African men and women and children, and in a place of worship, giving thanks and praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You need to put your head down today like you've never done before and say, Allah, for whatever reason, I forgot you. Make me remember you and all of your blessings because there's a great quote in the Quran. To show you the power of his love in the transformation of enemies into friends. He says, Look at the spirit of Islam. Allah says, rehearse the favor of God upon you. The prophet is companions. You are once enemies and I joined your hearts. And I save you off the brick of the fires of hell. I'm telling you, your worst enemy tomorrow can become your best friend and your brother and sister in this religion called Al-Islam. There's a great future for Islam in America. Oh, there's a great future beyond your expectations. And it's undefeatable. When Muhammad Ali said he was the greatest, he was the greatest in his field. Not in the boxing arena, but he was the embodiment of what it meant to be a free believing Muslim. That's what you have to give your children. Courage of conviction. Don't bow, don't bend, don't compromise, and don't live in fear. Someone said they was coming to shoot up the mosque? No problem. Let the police stand guard and we'll watch. Whatever they do, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Why? Because we're not running and we're not going to live in fear. Because fear is the way of the coward. You were born to die. Every soul will taste death. We don't intend to die a foolish death. We will watch. But don't you ever stop coming to the masjid because somebody made a threat. The next time somebody threatened the mosque, you need to make sure more people fill up the mosque. If it was 200, bring 2,000. You send them the message that you are not scared and that you are determined as Americans and as guests of America to have all of the rights and the dignity of a human being, not bestowed by democracy, but bestowed by his majesty. You are noble people. Hold your head up. Inspire your children and respect yourself and invest in this community out of all the places I've traveled. This right now, MAPS, MAPS community, I traveled to so many masjids. You are the 21st century example of what a mosque should look like in America. This is it right here. You don't even know what you have, but if you travel around the world, here in the gates of North America, you will appreciate what you have right here. You have a tremendous blessing. Invest in it, not for you, for your children, not for the children, for your grandchildren. Because one day, inshallah, one day, there should be maybe 20 buildings in this area that belong to you. You could do it. Trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this month of Ramadan, don't have bukhul, you know, don't be stingy. Give. Today, tomorrow, tonight, the last 10 nights, there's 500 people in here. 
all of us give a thousand dollars five hundred thousand easy you say brother i gave already so what you're still breathing as long as you breathe you spend in allah's way as long as you breathe you serve allah you serve humanity and you search for the best of what's in yourself you live for purpose, not for material aspirations, because it's all an illusion. You live for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You live for his glory. You live to be the embodiment of the great teachings of Prophet Muhammad, mercy, kindness, and compassion, and love, not for Muslims, but for humanity. Allahumma maqsim lana min khashyatika ma tuballighuna bihi jannatak. Wa min al yaqeeli ma tuhawwinu bihi alayna masaib dunya اللهم متعنا بأسماءنا وأبصارنا وقواتنا ما حيتنا واجعله وارث منا واجعل ثعرنا على من ضرمنا وانصرنا على من عادانا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا تسلط علينا بذنوبنا من لا يرحمنا يا رب العالمين اللهم تقبل صيامنا وزكاتنا وصدقاتنا وقراءة القرآن ودعاءنا يا رب العالمين اللهم نسلك بأسمائك الحسنى وصفاتك العليا أن ترحم أمواتنا من المسلمين واجعل قبورهم روضة من رياض الجنة ولا حفرة من حفرات النار اللهم اجعلنا من المحسنين وجعلنا من القائمين وجعلنا من الصائمين وجعلنا من المؤمنين وجعلنا من أهل الله بفضلك ورحمتك أنت خير الراحمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك الكريم محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن يتبعه بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم صلم على محمد وعلى آل محمد may Allah accept our prayers accept our fasting and may this be a moment and a time and a season for us to be inspired to do more for this great faith and for our wonderful, amazing community of Muslims in the gates of North America and throughout the world. Wa aqimu salat.